Commander Fenris watched the video of helpless humans being mercilessly gunned down by his forces, their blood splattering the streets. Something about how the humans smiled defiantly as the Trill soldiers shot them didn't feel right. He turned to his second in command. Have you decrypted that Valkyrie contingency file from Earth's northern polar region yet? No, sir. But whatever it is, it's labeled Last Resort in big red letters. Thousands of encrypted personnel entries. It must be where they were hiding their elites. Fenris sneered, his elongated green fingers steepling. No matter. They'll soon be dead too, just like the rest of their pathetic race. I want names and locations immediately. Fenris leaned back, contemplating. Taking Earth had been easy, suspiciously easy. Their defences were primitive, most weapons centuries obsolete. Trill troops had overrun Earth in mere days, slaughtering millions. At the time, human lack of resistance had seemed to Fenris like simple resignation to their inevitable extinction. But now, seeing those strangely confident smiles on human faces in their dying moments, Fenris felt a chill run through him. It was almost as if the humans had let the Trill win. As if by crushing them so easily, the overconfident Trill had fallen into an intricate human trap. Deep beneath the ice of Earth's Arctic, row after row of cryopods hissed open, and the genetically engineered super-soldiers within opened their eyes for the first time in centuries. It was time to show the galaxy what happened when you backed humanity into a corner. The Trill soldier stumbled backward, nearly tripping over his own feet as he quickly put distance between himself and the opening pod. His companion spun around, weapon at the ready, as the pod door swung open with a soft hiss. Cold mist spilled out, obscuring the contents for a moment, before dissipating to reveal the now-thawed form of Randy Bennett. Bennett's eyes snapped open, his expression still stern even as he blinked away the lingering frost. He sat up slowly, muscles no doubt stiff from centuries of disuse. The Trill soldiers kept their weapons trained on him, but neither fired, both seemingly too stunned by the sudden awakening to react. Commander Fenris, the first soldier said into his comlink, voice shaking slightly, The human is awake, repeat, the human is awake and active. There was a burst of static from the other end, followed by Fenris's voice, now tinged with a hint of fear beneath the anger. What do you mean, awake? I thought you said they were in suspended animation. They were, sir, the soldier replied, never taking his eyes off Bennett as the human slowly climbed out of the pod, movements growing more fluid with each passing second. But it seems the pods are designed to wake them automatically. And, sir, he paused, swallowing hard. The other pods are starting to open as well. All around the chamber, the soft hiss of opening pod doors filled the air, icy mist pouring out as more and more of the Valkyrie contingency assets began to stir. The soldiers watched in growing horror as dozens, then hundreds of humans, began to sit up, each one looking as stern and formidable as Bennett. But Fenris had no answer. He could only watch through the video feed in stunned silence as the humans he thought safely neutralized began to rise, an army of super-soldiers hidden away for this very moment. The Trill's arrogance had been their undoing, and now the true might of humanity was about to be unleashed upon the unsuspecting galaxy. Bennett stepped forward, the ice crunching under his boots as he approached the soldiers. Around him more and more of his fellow Valkyries emerged from their pods, each one falling into step behind him in perfect unison. He came to a stop, mere feet from the lead soldier his eyes hard as he stared down the barrel of the alien's weapon. "'We are the Valkyrie contingency,' Bennett said, his voice ringing out clear and strong in the frigid air. "'We are humanity's last resort, and our mission is simple.' His eyes narrowed, and for the first time, the faintest hint of a smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. "'To take back our world, and make you regret ever setting foot on it.' The office door slammed open as Fenris stormed in, his face a mask of barely contained fury. His second-in-command, a younger Trill named Calix, looked up from his data pad, mandibles clicking nervously. Commander, I was just about to call you. We have a situation in the cryo-chamber, Calix said, his voice wavering slightly. Fenris slammed his fist on the desk, 
the impact sending a stack of data pads clattering to the floor. What do you mean the pods are opening? How is that possible? We purge their central AI. There should be no way for those pods to activate autonomously. Calix consulted his data pad again, his fingers trembling slightly as he scrolled through the incoming reports. Sir, our techs are reporting that each pod seems to have its own independent power source and control system. They must have been designed to operate independently in case the main system went offline. Fenris's eyes narrowed to slits. Clever, too clever. But it doesn't matter. Order your men to open fire the moment those pods open, even a crack. I don't care how advanced these humans might be. They'll be disoriented and helpless after centuries in stasis. Kalix nodded, relaying the orders into his comlink. There was a tense pause, both Trill waiting with bated breath for a response from the soldiers in the cryo-chamber. Suddenly, a burst of static and screaming erupted from the comlink, causing Kalix to flinch back in surprise. Fenris leaned forward, his mandibles twitching with agitation. Report what's happening down there. Kalix shook his head, his own mandibles clicking rapidly as he tried to make sense of the chaotic transmission. I don't know, sir. The transmission cut out. It sounded like screaming and gunfire. Fenris stood abruptly, drawing his sidearm in one fluid motion. Gunfire? Impossible. Those humans should be unarmed and barely conscious. Unless... His eyes widened as a sudden, chilling realization dawned on him. Unless they weren't in stasis at all. What if it was something else? Some kind of accelerated conditioning or enhancement process? Calix looked up, his expression mirroring the dawning horror on his commander's face. Enhancement? You mean like... super soldiers? But that's just a myth. No race has ever successfully created true super-soldiers. The process always fails or produces unstable abominations. Fenris was already moving towards the door, his movements tight with controlled urgency. The humans were always different. We should have known they'd find a way. And now we've walked right into their trap. He paused at the door, looking back at Calix. Raise the fleet. We need to contain this now. Not one of those humans leaves this planet alive. Calix nodded, his fingers already flying across his data pad as he issued the command. Fenris turned and strode out of the office, his mind racing. The humans had outplayed them, luring the Trill into a false sense of security before revealing their true strength. Now, with an army of enhanced super-soldiers at their command, the fate of the Trill invasion hung in the balance. As he made his way to the command center, Fenris couldn't shake the feeling that they had gravely underestimated the humans. They had assumed them to be weak, easily conquered and subjugated. But now, faced with the prospect of battling an enemy that had been preparing for this very moment for centuries, Fenris began to wonder if the Trill had finally met their match. The command center was a hive of activity when Fenris arrived, officers and technicians scrambling to coordinate the fleet's response to the unfolding crisis. Fenris strode to the central hollow table, which displayed a real-time map of the cryo-facility and the surrounding area. Status report, he barked, his eyes scanning the holographic display for any sign of the humans. A young officer snapped to attention, her mandibles clicking rapidly as she spoke. Sir, we've lost contact with the teams in the cryo-chamber. Their vitals are offline, and we're not picking up any movement on the sensors. Fenris felt a chill run down his spine. And the humans? The officer hesitated, then tapped a few commands into the hollow table. The map zoomed in on the cryo chamber, revealing a mass of red dots moving in perfect unison towards the surface. They're on the move, sir, and they're not alone. The officer enhanced the image, revealing dozens more red dots emerging from hidden alcoves and passageways throughout the facility. It looks like they had more than one contingency in place. Fenris slammed his fist on the edge of the hollow table, his eyes blazing with barely contained rage. Of course they did. They planned for every eventuality, every possible scenario, and we played right into their hands. He turned to the officer, his voice low and deadly. Send in every available unit. I want gunships, heavy armor, everything we have. We cannot let them reach the surface. The officer nodded, 
relaying the orders to the fleet. Fenris turned back to the hollow table, watching as the red dots continued their inexorable advance. He had underestimated the humans once, and it had cost him dearly. He would not make that mistake again. As the first reports of engagement began to filter in, Fenris steeled himself for the battle to come. The humans may have caught them by surprise, but the Trill were far from defeated. They would fight to the last, and they would not rest until every last human had been wiped from the face of the planet. The fate of two species hung in the balance, and Fenris knew that the outcome of this battle would echo through the ages. The Trill had come to Earth seeking conquest and glory, but now they found themselves locked in a desperate struggle for survival against an enemy they had never truly understood. And deep beneath the ice, the Valkyries continued their relentless march, their enhanced bodies and minds honed to a razor's edge by centuries of preparation. They had been created for this very purpose, to be humanity's last line of defense against the darkness that threatened to engulf them. As they emerged into the frigid Arctic air, their eyes fixed on the distant glow of the Trill fleet, the Valkyries knew that their true mission had only just begun. They would fight, and they would die if necessary, but they would not rest until their world was free once more. The battle for Earth had begun, and the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. The two Trill soldiers sat in stunned silence for a moment, the gravity of Fenris's words sinking in, the first soldier, his voice trembling slightly, finally spoke. Reinforcements? You mean there could be more humans out there, like the ones in the pods? His companion nodded slowly, his eyes distant. It's possible. We always assumed Earth was their only world. But what if we were wrong? What if they had colonies out there, hidden away, waiting for this moment? The first soldier shuddered his mind reeling at the implications. But if that's true, then this isn't just about Earth anymore. This could turn into a full-scale war spanning the entire galaxy. The second soldier leaned forward, his expression grim. And we might be on the losing side. Think about it. If those soldiers in the pods were able to take out our elite troops, imagine what an entire army of them could do. We might be facing an enemy unlike any we've ever encountered before. The first soldier's mandibles clicked nervously. But how could the humans have planned for this? How could they have known we were coming and had those soldiers ready and waiting? The second soldier shook his head. I don't know, but you have to admit it's almost like they were expecting us, like they knew we'd underestimate them and they used that against us. The first soldier fell silent, contemplating the terrifying possibilities. If the humans had indeed planned for this... If they had lured the Trill into a trap and had reinforcements waiting in the wings, then the entire invasion could be in jeopardy. The second soldier seemed to be thinking along the same lines. We need to report this to high command. They need to know what we're potentially up against. If there are more human soldiers out there, we need to be prepared. The first soldier nodded in agreement, reaching for his comlink. But even as he did so, a sense of dread settled over him. The humans, it seemed, were far more cunning and dangerous than any of them had ever imagined, and if they truly had more surprises in store, then the Trill Empire itself could be facing an existential threat. As the transport ship continued its orbit around Earth, the two soldiers could only watch and wait, their minds filled with visions of the apocalyptic war that might be lurking just over the horizon. The humans had played their hand, and now the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. The counsellor steepled his fingers, his holographic form shimmering. A warning. His voice was grave. The humans left a warning for the entire galaxy. Fenris nodded, his eyes still fixed on the datapad. They must have known they couldn't win, but they could still hurt us, even in death. By turning the galaxy against us, the counsellor mused. Clever, desperate, but clever. Fenris looked up, his mandibles tight, we can't let this warning spread. If the other races unite against us... It would be disastrous, the counselor finished. Our conquest would be set back decades, if not centuries. Fenris started pacing again, his boots clicking against the deck. 
We need to contain this. Scrub the signal from every relay, every database. The counselor shook his head. It's too late for that. The signal has already propagated through half the galaxy. Trying to erase it now would only draw more attention to it. Fenris slammed his fist against the bulkhead. Then what do we do? We can't just let this stand. The counselor was silent for a long moment. We control the narrative, he said finally. We paint the humans as the aggressors. We claim they attacked us first, that we were merely defending ourselves. Fenris scoffed. You think the galaxy will believe that after seeing what we did to Earth? They will if we sell it right, the counselor said. We have the resources, the influence. We can make them see what we want them to see. Fenris shook his head. And what of the human super soldiers? If there are more of them out there, what? Then we find them, the counselor said, his voice hardening. We hunt them down one by one before they can become a rallying point for resistance. Fenris stopped pacing, facing the counselor. It won't be easy. If they're anything like the ones we faced on Earth... I never said it would be easy, Commander, but it is necessary for the good of the Trill, for the good of our Empire. Fenris was silent for a long moment, then slowly he nodded. I understand, Counselor. I'll, I'll begin preparations immediately. See that you do, Commander. The fate of our species may very well depend on it. The hologram flickered and vanished, leaving Fenris alone on the bridge. He looked down at the data pad at the words that could unravel everything the Trill had worked for. Damn you, he whispered, though whether he was speaking to the humans or to himself he couldn't quite say. Damn you all to hell! He turned to his second, his eyes hard. Get me a line to the High Command, we have work to do. Zara leaned back in her chair, rubbing her temples as she stared at the complex web of genetic data on the screen. The implications were staggering. The humans hadn't just enhanced themselves. They had fundamentally altered the very fabric of their being. She turned to Torin, her eyes wide with a mix of awe and trepidation. Do you realize what this means? The humans, they've achieved something we thought was impossible. They've transcended their biological limitations. Torin paced the small room, his boots clicking against the metal floor. But at what cost, Zara? They've turned themselves into weapons living, breathing weapons, with a grudge against us. Zara sighed, scrolling through more data. I know, but can you imagine what it must have taken? The level of scientific advancement, the sheer audacity to attempt something like this? Torin stopped pacing, leaning over her shoulder to look at the screen. Great. So not only are they physically superior, but they're smarter than us, too. Just perfect. Zara shook her head. It's not just about intelligence, it's, it's the way their brains are wired now, the neural pathways, the synaptic connections. It's like they're optimized for strategy, for problem-solving, for warfare. She sat back, a chill running down her spine despite the warmth of the room. They planned for this, Torin. They engineered themselves to be the perfect soldiers, the perfect survivors. And we, we walked right into their trap. Torin was silent for a long moment, his mandibles tight against his face. Then we need to find a way to beat them at their own game. We need to understand this, this post-human DNA. Find a way to counter it, to neutralize the threat they pose. Zara nodded, already turning back to the screen, her fingers flying over the keys. I'll keep digging, there has to be something, some weakness we can exploit. They can't be invincible. Nothing is. But even as she said it, a part of her wondered. The humans had achieved something, something almost miraculous. They had taken control of their own evolution, shaped themselves into something new, something powerful. And now that power was turned against the Trill, the very beings who had sought to conquer and destroy them. It was almost poetic in a way, the hunted becoming the hunters. Zara shook her head, banishing the thought. Now was not the time for philosophical musings. Now was the time for action, for finding a way to save her species from the storm that was coming. Because if they couldn't stop the post-humans, then the Trill Empire's days were numbered, and the galaxy would never be the same again. The holographic display flickered as Fenris manipulated the controls, 
the star systems rotating and zooming in response. Chorus leaned forward, his single eye studying the map intently. The Varan and the Keld, he mused, mandibles clicking thoughtfully. Advanced races, both of them, if the humans managed to win them over. It would be catastrophic, Vela finished, her own gaze fixed on the map. The Varan's technological prowess combined with the Keld's biological weapons. We wouldn't stand a chance. Fenris nodded grimly. Which is why we can't let that happen. We need to intercept the humans before they reach those systems, cut them off and eliminate them. Chorus straightened, his scarred face set in determination. I'll lead the fleet myself. We'll hunt them down no matter where they run. But Vela looked uncertain. And what if we fail? What if the humans do manage to rally these other races against us? Fenris met her gaze, his eyes hard. Then we fight. We fight with everything we have, because the alternative... He shook his head. The alternative is the end of the Trill Empire, and that is unacceptable. He turned back to the map, his fingers flying over the controls. I'm transmitting the data to your ships now. You have your orders. Find the humans. Stop them by any means necessary. Chorus and Vela nodded, their expressions grim. They understood the stakes. The very future of their species hung in the balance. As they turned to leave, Fenris called out one last time. And Chorus, Vela. They paused, looking back. Fenris's mandibles twitched. Bring me Randy Bennett. Alive, if possible. I want to look into the eyes of the man who dared to challenge the might of the Trill Empire. Chorus's single eye gleamed. With pleasure, Commander. Then they were gone, striding from the room with purposeful steps, ready to begin the hunt. Fenris turned back to the holographic map, watching the systems spin. The humans had played their hand well, he had to admit, scattering to the far reaches of the galaxy, seeking allies among the stars. It was a bold move. A desperate move. But the Trill were far from beaten. They would rise to this challenge as they had risen to every other, and when the dust settled, when the last human had been brought to heel, the galaxy would remember the folly of defying the Trill Empire. Fenris's mandibles curled in a grim smile. The hunt was on. The two Trill spies huddled closer, their voices dropping to urgent whispers as they discussed the alarming developments. Bennett must have been planning this for cycles, Raxus muttered, shaking his head in disbelief. The sheer audacity of it, to have spies embedded in advanced civilizations like the Voran, gathering intel, all while we thought they were just a primitive species. Zephyr's mandibles clicked in agitation. And now they're using that intel to turn the galaxy against us, if they succeed in swaying the Keld as well. It'll be a disaster, Raxus finished grimly, the Keld's biological weapons combined with Voran technology in human hands, we wouldn't stand a chance. Zephyr paced in a tight circle, his boots scuffing against the grimy spaceport floor. We need to alert the High Council immediately. They need to know what we're up against. Raxus held up a hand. Wait, there's more. He glanced around again, ensuring no one was within earshot. The humans... they're searching for something a weapon they call the Doomsday Device. Zephyr's eyes widened. Doomsday Device? What in the void is that? I don't know the details, but from what I could gather, it's something the humans were developing in secret long before we invaded Earth. Some kind of fail-safe weapon, a last resort. A chill ran through Zephyr's veins. You think... you think they knew we were coming, that they were preparing for war with us all along? Raxus nodded solemnly. It's the only thing that makes sense. The super soldiers, the spies, and now this doomsday device, it's all part of a plan. A plan that's been in motion for a long, long time. Zephyr leaned against the wall, his mind reeling. Void take them. The humans, they played us. They played us all for fools. Zephyr pushed off the wall, his expression hardening with resolve. Then we need to stop them. We need to find this doomsday device before they do and destroy it. Raxus met his gaze, his own eyes glinting with determination. Agreed, because if the humans get their hands on it... He didn't need to finish the sentence. They both knew the stakes. 
The fate of not just the Trill, but the entire galaxy hung in the balance. As they slipped out of the spaceport and into the bustling streets beyond, Raxus and Zephyr knew their mission had just become a race against time. A race to stop the humans before they could unleash their ultimate weapon and change the face of the galaxy forever. In the murky depths of space, two Trill scouts, Zephyr and Raxus, huddled in their cramped cockpit. The only light came from the dim glow of their control panels and the distant stars outside the viewport. Zephyr leaned forward, his single eye fixed on the readouts. The fleet's mobilizing, every ship, every soldier. Fenris isn't holding back. Raxus nodded, his mandibles clicking softly. He can't afford to, not with what's at stake. He didn't need to finish the sentence. They both knew the implications. A weapon that could alter the very fabric of the universe in the hands of a species with a grudge against the Trill. It was a nightmare scenario. Zephyr shook his head. I don't understand. How could the humans have created something like that? Their technology was centuries behind ours. Raxus was silent for a moment, contemplating. Maybe they had help. Maybe they found something and or someone out there in the void. Something even we don't know about. A chill ran through Zephyr's veins at the thought. The Trill had always considered themselves the most advanced species in the galaxy. The idea that there could be something out there, something even they were unaware of, it was unsettling. Do you think we can stop them? he asked softly. The humans, I mean. Do you think we can get to the Zeron system in time? Raxus sighed, his eye fixed on the distant stars. I don't know, but we have to try. The fate of everything depends on it. In the silence that followed, both scouts found themselves grappling with a troubling realization. They had always viewed the humans as primitive, as lesser. But now, faced with the prospect of a human-made weapon that could unravel the universe itself, they were forced to confront an uncomfortable truth. Maybe, just maybe, they had underestimated the humans from the very beginning. Maybe in their arrogance they had awakened a sleeping giant, one with the power to bring the mighty Trill Empire to its knees. And as they watched the Trill fleet assemble in the distance, preparing for the battle that would decide the fate of the galaxy, Zephyr and Raxus couldn't shake the feeling that they were witnessing the beginning of the end. The end of the Trill's dominion over the stars, and perhaps the end of everything they had ever known. The dim, flickering lights of the battered Trill battleship cast an eerie glow on the faces of Commander Fenris and Zara as they sat in the cramped, debris-strewn room. The ship groaned and creaked around them, a testament to the beating it had taken in the battle against the humans. Fenris shifted in his seat, grimacing as pain shot through his injured leg. He leaned heavily on his crutch, his once proud uniform now tattered and stained with blood. I can't wrap my head around it, he said, his voice hoarse with exhaustion and defeat. We threw everything we had at them, every ship, every weapon, every soldier, and still the humans outsmarted us. Zara nodded, her own injuries evident in the careful way she held herself. A deep gash ran down the side of her face, hastily patched up in the aftermath of the battle. They were prepared for us, she said, her words tinged with a mix of admiration and disbelief. It's like they knew our every move before we made it. Fenris sighed, the weight of their failure heavy on his shoulders. And now the doomsday device is in their hands. We've failed, Zara. Failed our people, our empire, the entire galaxy. The humans have won and we've lost everything. Fenris's head snapped up, his eyes narrowing as he looked at her. What are you saying? Zara met his gaze, her expression thoughtful. Think about it, Fenris. The humans, they had the power to wipe us out, to use the doomsday device to eradicate every last trill in the galaxy, but they didn't. Fenris frowned, his mandibles twitching in agitation. No, instead they used it to cripple our fleet. Our weapons are useless, our ships dead in the water. They've left us completely vulnerable. But Zara shook her head. They left us alive, she said, her voice growing stronger. Don't you see? Even after everything we did to them, all the death and destruction we brought to their world, they still showed us mercy. 
Zara turned to look out the viewport, her eyes reflecting the distant stars. I think they understand something we don't. They've seen the cycle of violence, the endless back and forth of war and retaliation, and they chose to break that cycle. She turned back to Fenris. Randy Bennett sent a message before they left. He said that humans don't want conquest or revenge. All they want is to live in peace, and as long as we leave them be, they'll do the same for us. A faint smile touched Zara's lips. Bennett said they're going to destroy it. No one should have that kind of power, he said. Not humans, not Trill, not anyone. Fenris stared at her, shock etched across his face. Destroy it. But they could use it to dominate the entire galaxy. Zara nodded. They could, but they won't. Because they're different from us, Fenris. They're not driven by the same greed and lust for power. They just want to survive, to live their lives. She paused, then added softly, Maybe there's a lesson in that for us. Maybe if we could learn to see things the way they do. Fenris was silent for a long time, the weight of her words hanging in the air between them. Finally, slowly, he nodded. Maybe you're right, he said, his voice rough with emotion. Maybe it is time for a change. He turned to look out at the stars, at the vast, infinite expanse of the galaxy stretching out before them a galaxy that suddenly seemed full of new possibilities, new paths forward. Maybe, he whispered more to himself than to Zara, maybe there's still hope for us after all. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.